It was Mama Dorothy. Then I had my daughter. She had my daughter. We were the child of Dorothy. It was Mama Dorothy. Then I had my daughter. It was Mama Dorothy. Investigating uh, this team, the Nene Rituals, made me uh, realize um, investigating uh, uh, through uh, history and to uh, places and uh, time periods that uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, uh, things in uh, common, uh, especially uh, when I studied in Jamaica. Uh, for instance, uh, I always ask myself, um, why I, as an uh, uh, outsider, um, were more adapted to their language. And that uh, inspired me to uh, investigate uh, more and uh, to know about uh, what we have uh, uh, together in common. And that uh, made me realize that, uh, for instance, uh, the Cromanti uh, language is uh, that we have uh, a lot of uh, also the, the language uh, is something uh, uh, powerful and that uh, we have that uh, in common because our Maroon uh, language uh, here in uh, Suriname is uh, have a lot of uh, things uh, uh, that uh, blend together and that is what uh, I find uh, very interesting through this team. Questions uh, that uh, are, un are unanswered uh, to me is how we as uh, our Tsunami's uh, native, um, why we are so different than uh, the rest uh, of, the, of the world, of the Caribbean. And that is uh, something uh, that we still are uh, uh, on a daily basis uh, are searching uh, on that uh, we have uh, uh, a lot of uh, culture too that uh, is linked uh, with uh, that piece of uh, history but we still are very different than, than, than that part of uh, the world. My uh, next step is uh, uh, through research I came on to this uh, point where I uh, stumbled on uh, the ship uh, Lisbon and uh, what I uh, really uh, would like to investigate uh, further is uh, for instance uh, uh, what I find very fascinating to see is that uh, people were taken from their homes in uh, Africa but there is no uh, data about the names or uh, where they come from. So uh, the next step uh, I would uh, really uh, want to dig uh, into that uh, um, uh, history or that path where these uh, African uh, ancestors uh, are taken uh, from so that uh, it can bring me to the next uh, uh, level or clue uh, to uh, uh, put back into uh, the next uh, piece of art uh, what I trying to uh, investigate on this piece. So what, uh, what I really uh, want to uh, dig into are the different uh, layers of uh, language that are out there. Thanks uh, to uh, my uh, two uh, uh, galleries that uh, I am uh, able to uh, travel and uh, see uh, more countries and uh, learn about uh, their tradition and their language. It is uh, very uh, fascinating uh, to see that uh, even though you can uh, hear the normal uh, language uh, that you speak, 
that uh, uh, above that there are more spiritual languages uh, that uh, are out there but you don't see and recognize uh, as yet and that is uh, really uh, because of the uh, the travels that I am able uh, to do uh, thanks to my uh, galleries, uh, Raditex Art Gallery and uh, DVCI uh, organization that I am able to understand or to recognize that there are an, uh, another level of uh, uh, languages uh, out there what I really would like to uh, dig in. Uh, it is also uh, very fascinating to see that when I study for instance, uh, our Shanantongo uh, language compared to the Jamaican uh, Patwa, but uh, now I find out uh, a third language uh, uh, that is a bit uh, forgotten and lost, uh, uh, the language in uh, Burmese uh, Dutch uh, Guyana, uh, spoken uh, by uh, a 103-year-old lady, uh, Miss uh, Berta, Berta Bell. Um, that is uh, being investigated through a, a Hubert uh, Daphnesia professor of the uh, West Indies uh, in Jamaica and that uh, brought me also to a, a next uh, language, uh, the Gola language and that is uh, really as an artist uh, I would like to investigate more on those uh, uh, levels of uh, languages. Uh, welcome, thank you for joining us. Um, um, uh, thank you to Artsy for hosting the Atlantic World um, Art Fair. Uh, we are delighted to be a part of that. Thank you to our lead sponsor, um, Butterfield, for believing in the project and supporting us the way they did. Um, thank you to all my um, colleagues. We are nine galleries participating in this art fair. And we are um, Black Pony Gallery from Bermuda, Frame Center Gallery from Jamaica, Gallery Alma Blau from Curacao, Olympia Gallery from Jamaica, um, Reditex Art Gallery from Suriname, Sourgrass from Barbados, Suzy Wong Presents from Jamaica, and Turn um, from the Bahamas. Uh, but I would like to um, put a special light on Lisa Howie from Black Pony Gallery. Um, um, I, I would love to applaud her for her concept for the Atlantic World Art Fair and for her courage to actually move forward with this initiative and reach out to all of us. Um, it's an amazing um, presentation on a world forum which for us Caribbean um, entrepreneurs and Caribbean women especially in the arts is a is a huge milestone um, we represent together 74 artists who are creative uh, on a steady basis in 22 countries representing even more if we consider each artist's heritage we represent the world but this is something we caribbean people are are used to and for us it's um, almost normal um, there are 283 artworks in our boots all together so i invite you and and hope you can make the time to visit artsy.net forward slash Atlantic World Art Fair, visit our booths, uh, watch what artists in the Caribbean are doing these days and um, be part of their amazing journey. Um, I am Monique Nushaya. I, um, I lead the ReadyTex Art Gallery Initiative. Uh, I am so honored to be working with 
18 amazing artists and uh, so many amazing people that work together with us, professionals that give us wings. Um, our booth in the Atlantic World Art Fair um, has a specific theme and is centered around the concept of a la condre. And I invite you to, um, to join us uh, online on our social media presences and to do some study on the matter. We are always prepared to, um, to uh, send you more uh, information should you like to, um, to, to read more and hear more about, uh, about this. Um, I invite you as we move forward to um, leave comments, questions, and contributions by text in our chat box. We will try to answer uh, whatever uh, we have the opportunity within the time frame to do so. Let me, um, uh, allow me to introduce um, our guests, um, which are uh, Rosie Gordon Wallace of Diaspora Vibe Cultural and Arts Incubator, um, Dr. Alex Pierre, a resident scholar of Spelman um, College, and Kurt Nahar, um, visual artist, um, please. Would you come sit with me? Hi, Rosie. Hi, Alex. Hi, Monique. Rosie, Rosie, um, Rosie Gordon Wallace is um, is a colleague, is my friend, is a partner in projects. Um, uh, in the years that I have come to know her, know her, um, I have um, learned how she connects, inspires, and leads artists colleagues and collectors from the Caribbean, from its diaspora. And um, what Rosie does so very well is make you feel at home and make you feel welcome. And this is so very important because people need, if people need to, to, to want to know more about each other, they have to really like each other too. And, um, and this, is, <laughs> this is very important. Dr. Pierre is resident scholar at Spelman College and he has prepared a presentation and I have been privy to see the pictures on his um, um, PowerPoint presentation and it makes me so eager to hear what he will have to say um, uh, after Rosie. And then Kurt Nahar, um, I have been working with Kurt Nahar for over 18 years. Kurt is a hardworking, steadfast, ethical artist, true to what he wants to say visually. And I must say that when you work in such a confrontational style and shocking in the Caribbean, this is really very um, difficult because uh, we Caribbean people do not like to confront. We are small communities. Um, we, don't, we don't want to upset each other because tomorrow you see each other in a different way and on the road and you don't want to um, have um, bothered anybody too hard. But he has stayed true to what he, his vision of his artistry and what is so amazing that while his tongue is very sharp in his artwork, uh, he is a very humorous, kind human being. And um, I take immense pride in being part of his artistic journey. I want to pass uh, the presentation over to Rosie. Thank you, Monique. Um, first of all, I want to thank um, Atlantic Art Fair and Artsy for this really important opportunity. Um, we we complain in the Caribbean that we we complain in the Caribbean that we don't get seen. And as you know, Monique, I, my favorite saying is that we are accidentally ignored. And when you called me, I had not heard about this opportunity. And when you called me and asked if I would be willing to share um, the work that Diaspora Bad Cultural Arts Incubator has done with, with, with Kurt, whom I affectionately call Harry. Mm. And I will tell you what that means afterwards. Um, it, was real, it is really a pleasure to be here. I am so proud to be on this platform 
with you, Monique, and with Reditex Gallery, because like me, you have been in the trenches doing this work for artists, most of the times unrecognized. And um, it's so it's a real joy. Um, of course, Alex Peer, Dr. Alex Peer is our resident scholar, and um, both Kurt, Harry, and I, and <laughs> Alex, all three of us, <laughs> we, we, um, we have worked together in the Caribbean. Folks, I'm Rosie Gordon-Wallace, and I live in Miami-Dade, um, where we try to work with emerging artists and artists from the diaspora, in the diaspora, from Latin America all the way over to Suriname. Those of you who have watched me work know that I have a tender spot in my heart for Suriname. Um, when we went to Suriname on our international cultural exchange and met Monique, Harry had spoken about us. And Monique, the owner and founder of Reditex Gallery and Slash Museum in Suriname, welcomed us, all 15 of us, um, to her stable and we have worked steadily since then. I think that um, this journey, this looking to the global south is a really important step for us that live in the diaspora. Um, we have traveled to, to France and Barbados, you can read the text, but um, today the focus, the, the spotlight, the stadium lights um, are on Suriname, the work that's been done. And in particular, I wanna thank um, Harry's and I have to, it's going to happen throughout the whole presentation for Harry equals Kurt and Kurt <laughs> equals Harry. Um, that his colleagues, his artistic colleagues in Suriname, I know they are proud of him. The spotlight is on Harry, but the spotlight really is on the work that you artists have been doing in Suriname. So I want to go ahead and start the, answering my own questions. How did I meet Kurt Nahar? I met Kurt Nahar at um, Edna Manley College of the Visual Arts and Performing Arts. Next slide, please. This is Kurt working diligently. This is a really wonderful image of him. Um, this is how I remember Kurt. This is how I think of him in Miami. Always working, always working. And folks, please remember that we have to do the work. So I met, uh, I met Kurt at Edna Manley. We went to Jamaica. We meaning the Aspervad Cultural Arts Incubator went to Jamaica and we were hosted by Revolution Gallery. Carol Campbell, the founder of Revolution Gallery invited us and we were co-hosted by Edna Manley College of the Performing Arts. Um, Dr. Uh, Pierre has also traveled with us to Edna Manley, but I want to also say that when we were there, Petrona Morrison was the director of the visual arts. And folks, you can't do this work in the Caribbean unless people welcome you. And it is always a joy to work with Edna Mandy um, as we have continued over the years. So Annie Hamilton, one of the lecturers at Edna Mandy at the time, called me and said, there is this special little artist, you know, come from Suriname and you're not going to be able to go home this summer can you host him in Miami? And at that time, when I met Kurt, Kurt Nahar, we, <laughs> we struggled to say Kurt, you know, my Jamaican tongue couldn't say it. So we affectionately rechristened him and called him Harry. And it is in this journey, this is the only, at that time, Bachelor of Arts program in the Caribbean. Edna Manley has been holding that torch and carrying that burden for artists throughout the region. And so for Harry to leave Suriname and come to Jamaica to study is a big deal. I have to mention Michael Elliott here, Harry, because you know, we do one hand can't clap. We don't do this alone. And when you send your children to our countries, I'm talking to parents now, people take care of them. And so Michael Elliott's family embraced Harry while he was in Jamaica. And it is important for you to remember that as we talk through the presentation. So, so, so Harry's work, and I'm going to read from his statement because his statement is so profound. Harry says, with my art, I choose to confront people with a number of critical subjects playing out in society today. And that goes to the point that Monique may, makes. His art has a double-edged um, machete and, and, and razor blade. 
as an artist coming from a small but culturally diverse country and community, studying in Jamaica and traveling to and participating in projects internationally have significantly increased my awareness with regards to the subjects of identity, equality, and race relations. When Harry and I talk, um, as we have continued this journey with Diaspora Vibe, we talk about race in the Caribbean as, as it appears in a different way. And he always asks me what it is and how it is that I am able to live in the United States where the race lens, the race card is a heavy card. So this, Harry also does through his, his work. He says, my recent works are there for an exploration into identity, as you have seen in the video, into all the critical factors and social narratives past and present that either shape or undermine it. And he quotes Remy by saying, where waters segregate us, but also bring us to the door of no return. We just came off um, three museum insertions of Kurt's work. Uh, we started at the Cochrane, then we went to the Harvey B. Gunn Center, and then we ended up in the Miami Design District, May 31st. And Harry, Harry's work was, one of his pieces was called The Door of No Return. Harry, I am telling you, people stood at that piece and shed tears. And, and so I want you to know that the work that you have been doing collectively all these years is not in vain. You have been communicating in a very potent way the politics and the narrative and the history of slavery and the trauma that we live with with these, with these histories in our bodies. So next slide, please. So what I'm going to do is take you through a journey because the journey started and in the International Cultural Exchange, what happens is we come to the country, Monique welcomes us to Suriname. We, we, there's a little nervousness, there's Ada, there's Cassandra, there's um, Sri, everybody's watching. And then we open the work. And this was at Dahal when we had our first exhibition. And as you can see, the people in the t-shirts, except for me, are all coming from the United States. And there is Monique kind of watching, kind of skeptically watching us as we laid out the work. What has happened is when we work in the region, we do not come to inform, we come to be informed. And we were so welcomed um, by the narrative and cultural similarities with the issues that we have in Miami. So here we are getting ready, notice the suitcase, getting ready to blend the work from the Miami artists with the Surinamese artists who have now become family. Next slide, please. This is, an, uh, this is to show you what our international cultural exchange faces look like. We are the Caribbean. And we, in this particular image, we have African-Americans, um, Jackie Arnett here. We have Cubans. We have Trinidad and Tobago, as I, who I thank so much for this PowerPoint. Um, we have Aisha Tandi Rebel. We have Gide Rosanade Gamendia from Cuba and Kurt Nahar. The journey through the Caribbean, and I think this is, if I'm not mistaken, this is um, Guadalupe. Guadalupe. This is Guadalupe, right? This is Guadalupe. Next, please. We're going to go through this a little faster. What I'm trying to show you here is what happens when we come to the region. Uh, Monique is smiling because every time I come to Suriname, I, I, I'm gifted by her these wraps that Surinamese women and men wear. And when, when I travel, I take them with me. I get goose pimples just talking about it, Mani. Mm -hmm. And we use them as tablecloths. We set the table and in our communal conversations, we, um, in our communal conversations, we do it on, on Surinamese tapestry and artistry coming from Reddit Text Gallery. And, and so next slide, please. Here it is, Kurt, when we travel, the artists that travel with us are asked to share their practice, not in an instructional way, but in a practical way where they can talk about materials, where we can share how it is that the work is realized from the head, the imagination, through the heart to the hands. And here on, on this particular slide, we have Harry presenting at the Arawak Hotel in, in Guadalupe 
to a really prestigious group of people who attended. And there is Simone Pierre, Alex's sister, who hosted us that evening as well. Kurt is a very um, intuitive presenter. When Kurt presents, Kurt talks about his how he gathers his materials. What I find interesting is you can put Kurt on a backyard and he will find something to make art with. This is because he's a data practitioner. And in data practitioners, they can use a thimble and make an installation. Kurt uses magazines, he uses fawn and flora, he uses coffee, he uses cotton. And of course, as you saw in the video, those beautifully carved calabash bowls. Next slide, please. When we went to Guadalupe this, on our last trip, I think this is 2020, right, Harry? 2020. Yes. Yes. Um, and I have, to be, I have to say to you that Alex Peer is from Guadalupe. But I am trying to show you what happens when we're invited to come to the countries to do these international exchanges. Harry was selected to do a one day installation where he, we dropped him off at the airport and he had to do an installation. Here is an example of his collage using his, his magazines, talking about wake up and live. Now this is 2020 when America is in a really conflicted space. We don't know whether we're coming or we're going. And here we are in Guadalupe talking about, um, with a Surinamese artist, telling people to wake up and live. It, I cannot tell you how profound these images of what the global South looks like turned up in, um, in Guadalupe. It was really well done. And what, what Harry does is typical of a collage artist is that he works in layers. So here he's painting the words, but on the actual collage, which was vinyl, he had cut and pasted. And remember now, when we got to Guadalupe, Harry, you didn't know you were going to get to do this. No, so this no. is what I'm talking about, an artist who works um, intuitively, but constantly poking us to, to be politically alive, to stay woke, folks. We got to stay woke. And this was in a time when we needed to hear this. So next slide, please. We talk about contemporary art in, in, in the Caribbean and folks in America and in England and in the rest of the, the developed world. And I have to put, I'm saying developed world in a, in a, after coming off a humbling year with COVID, who is developed, I'm not quite sure. The contemporary language looks like this. And we are Caribbean. We, you know, we, this work didn't come from the Whitney. This work didn't come from the Met. This work came from Suriname, from the hands of a Caribbean artist, using objects to speak about color, to speak about hair, to speak about bleaching, to speak about how you place yourself in community. All of this using the data methodology to share in a contemporary way. So, you know, yes, we do flowers and bananas and plants and we do them well and I love them. I love the colors, I love the flora and, and, and fauna of the Caribbean, but we have a really particular, um, unique contemporary language. And this is what Harry has taught us and shown us. Kurt, when I show this work here in the States, we get the ahs and the oohs because in our museums, a lot of times, black and brown bodies are not ascribed to this kind of, of, of language. And so I, I, I'm, I'm excited, as you know, with your work. Next slide, please. We talked a little bit, I mentioned um, intersectionality, diaspora art from the Creole city. This is not about me today. This is about showing you the 28 um, artists that participated in this three um, inserted exhibition coming all the way from the Cochrane in Washington, DC in 2019, in a time when our country was in real uproar. Kurt Nahar traveled with us from DC to the Harvey B. Gantt Center, where I have to thank Michelle Parchman for introducing us to David and Bonita there. And then we ended up in the Miami Design District where Claire Brookell and Craig Robbins invited us to have this amazing 138 piece um, exhibition where that Kurt's work brought physical 
tears when people looked at his work. So Kurt, um, this, this is a journey that we have been on. Next slide, please, and I'm almost done. Everybody knows that in the Caribbean, you rally around your flag. I mean, there's just no way about it. No matter where you go, you could say you're a Caribbean person, everybody's looking for their flag. So what we did with intersectionality is, and I can find Kirk's name. Where's your name, Kirk? Can you see your name with your flag? Yes. Proudly yeah. representing Suriname. Yeah. Um, and proudly representing the language that is so difficult for me to pronounce to make your name sound lovely. So I have to call you Harry. But yes. in, this, in this journey in the Caribbean, um, I could not have done it without the partnership, um, neither of us. And what we try to do, Harry, as you know, is to continue to support the work, to move the needle from emerging to mid-career to mature. So I think you're about mid-career now, Kurt. The yes. work needs to have some economic value. The work needs to bring back some reward for this hard work that we've done for the past 18 years together. Last slide, please. Next slide. And here is Harry in DC, proudly pointing out the Suriname um, flag that we, we all um, rallied around. Next slide, please. This is the installation that, that traveled through the three spaces, um, the door of no return. Uh, is this the Nora of No Return? Yes, it is. Right, Harry? Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, where we had the three calabash. It's not, you, you probably can't see it, but we had the three offerings uh, maroon to the maroon tradition. The three calabashes, with, one with cotton, one with sugar, and one with coffee. False sugar yes. is made with blood. And we know the sacrifice that our ancestors have done, not only in Jamaica, but in Suriname to, and in the world to provide free labor so that um, our economies can be flourishing now. We pay tribute to the maroon culture here. Next, please. Harry, you know that this is my favorite, right? Yes, no bleaching, yes. and I'm not no. gonna say anymore. Um, yes. we, I am Jamaican and I know that in the hip hop and um, dance hall culture, bleaching is, is seen quite frequently in Jamaica and I know it's happening in Suriname as well. This was a real powerful statement. Bleach one and bleach two, shown both yes. in, in our journey throughout the, camp, throughout the exhibition. Next, please. So Harry Kurt Nahar was given an, a, a Catalyst Award. And as um, my dear friend Monique just said, um, this award afforded Harry, the opportunity to do the installation that you were just introduced to. Each year, Das Provide tries to give um, an award of $5,000 to five individuals. It is becoming harder and harder to raise the money. So those of you who listen, who have disposed of the income, buy the work. So we don't have to worry about our artists <laughs> struggling um, to move from mid-career to maturity. That's what it's going to take. We have to get the work sold, then we have to get the work placed in a museum so that they can have this worldwide uh, opportunity that Axie is giving us. And I'm almost done. One more. So when I asked Harry, who on this journey from DC to South Carolina to Miami has been an influence on his work. And he said, there's a young artist in DC, Yassine Fall from Senegal, who Yassine's work uses um, pots and earth. Um, and I wanted to give a nod to this because one of the reasons why we work in community is that we borrow from each other and we use language from each other to infuse the work and make the work more powerful. So Kurt, this is, this is a tribute to you. Um, showing yes. you again the influence and many conversations and I laughed I hope Paula is not on this call and I said he <laughs> loves beautiful women I, I he's make married sure. to a beautiful one from Jamaica and we and we know yes. so you know you see there's also a beautiful Senegalese woman and yes. her work is really powerful hope I didn't get you in trouble Kurt no, um, no, no. <laughs> lastly I think that's it and so Folks, so what I want you to what I want you to hear is, um, we don't become masters overnight. Curators, what do curators do? 
we wear different hats. We advocate, we are project managers, we fundraise, we become friends, we become family, we are producers, we are writers, and all of this is done to push the artist from emerging to mid-career to maturity. It is with great joy, Harry, affectionately Harry, Kurt Nahar, that I offer this um, presentation to the world. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rosie. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so now we move forward to, to um, Dr. Pierre in, in the essence of time. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, thank you so much, Monique, and, and uh, you're right, and yes, and, you know, in the interest of time, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I want to start with uh, uh, a statement by Betty Saar, you know, visual African-American visual artist, who stated in an interview, and I quote, the slave ship imprint, imprint is on all of us, end of quote, and Suriname is no exception. Um, Nahar uh, carves out a space for himself in an established artistic tradition. He joins African and African descended visual artists, novelists, and other creatives in keeping the practice alive, passing on the story of the forced dispersal of Africans from the continent. With his installation, he joins the plurivocal account of Africans in the New World. Nahar complicates the narrative by offering the Suriname slash Dutch voice. There are several layers to his text, rituals and remembrance, rituals of remembrance of the subtext to his account. He picks up the resistance storyline. He chronicles the central role played by African women on the plantation and in the movement of resistance to slavery and enslavement. So what are the points of connection between the Nene rituals and the African-based tradition of literature, film, painting, sculpture, photography, videography, and installation art? So I have five, okay? Again, in the interest of time, I'm, I'm going to you know, be short. So the first one is the slave, uh, the slave ship motive. Uh, the second one, and yes, so again, remember what I indicated, uh, Kurt is, you know, joining uh, a tradition here. So I, I, you know, briefly would like to call uh, some artists, you know, African descended artists, you know, who also, uh, um, um, whose, you know, work, you know, touches upon the slave ship motive. So one is, Jama you know, from Jamaica, uh, Laura Facey, and I have three slides. This is the first one. Second one. Next slide, please. Next. This is the second from uh, Facey, the third one. Uh, next, uh, with the African-American artist, uh, Mark Bradford. Next slide. Uh, Cuban uh, Manuel Mandide, next slide, please. Mandide. Yeah. Uh, from Trinidad and Tobago, Christopher Cozier, mm -hmm. next. Next. Uh, and we also have African American uh, Malcolm uh, Bailey, uh, next. Uh, from Benin, Dominique Zimke. Uh, Another African American, uh, Tony Scott, uh, Afro British, Isaiah Julian, next. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, Haitian American, uh, Edouard Duval Carrier, Carrier next. Uh, so, in addition to the slave ship motive, we also have the African uh, or diasporic folk folk tale, this idea of the flying African, uh, which, you know, there's this story circulating in, in the diaspora about Africans uh, and, and, you know, enslaved who came here and usually we connect evil in the United States, evil landing to uh, this, this story 
uh, but there's also songs. I think of you know the South Carolina story. All all God's children have rings. He uses the same you know the same metaphor. Okay, uh, the idea that you know uh, Africans rather than sub, you know submitting to enslavement and slavery, uh, you know uh, turn around um, and walk back to uh, walk back to uh, to Africa. So symbolically, this is also present in. Kurt's, you know, uh, uh, installation with those uh, Africans, you know, uh, who deliberately uh, stayed in the hold of the slaver uh, and, and as a result died. But, you know, this is based on the belief that, you know, they're going to go back, they're going to migrate back to, uh, to Africa. Uh, the third uh, points of connection is uh, asserting their, their right to be or resistance. And uh, what you know is important here is the idea that's what um, um, Mahara does, you know, insists on the idea that Africans resisted every step of the way, from the point of capture to the trek to the hinterlands to the coastal areas to the waiting period in the barracoons to the boarding of the slave ships to the middle passage to the seasoning period in the Caribbean and then the dispersal in the plantations. The death, on the one hand, of African of the Africans who lock themselves up in the hold of the slave ship Muslims, and the survival of those who remain on deck with the crew, on the other hand, illustrate the fact that resistance meant different things to different people. Resistance to different forms, armed revolt, mutiny during the Middle Passage, poisoning the masters and the cattle on the plantation, suicide, infanticide, marooning, breaking the work tools, and showing them up late to work. But staying alive, which a group of those 664 Africans chose to do, defy the, defying the odds was also a form of defiance. Mm -hmm. The same enslaved individuals resisted at times and surrendered at other times. Their decision was always governed by the own question. If I choose to either poison or run away, whatever I choose to do, what will happen to my family and friends? <laughs> Both points of connection is remembrance slash memory. And the last one is ritual or memorial, which I connect uh, to conjuring, shamanism, and root working. Nahar, the shaman, uses the illustration as a conduit through which he helps us viewers connect. The installation is the medium through which we are able to travel time and space. This is made possible through the presence of ritual objects, candles, bottles of alcohol, calabashes, flags, the clay vessels, the clay ground, the nails, rice or salt, the ear of corn, the flower petals, the writings, the roots, the inverted cross, and the red ring. Mm -hmm. All these objects and the suspended calabashes convey the, into the installation a sentiment of cosmic trends and levitation where one hovers between the earth plane, the underworld, and the overworld. Nene Rituals is a summary of the African concept of time. It is not linear, but cyclical. The past, present, and future are interconnected. The deities watch over the living and future generations that are yet to be born. Thank you. Well, that was pretty amazing. Yes. Um, uh, or do, do you want to say something, perhaps? Um, I'm very sorry that in the in the video where you spoke in the film that the sound was um, not there. So yes. maybe you would like to say something. Uh, first of all, uh, I would uh, like uh, to thank uh, all of uh, you to uh, have uh, this uh, conversation uh, on this uh, Kind of level, and uh, also uh, uh, thanks to uh, Ms. Rosie and uh, her organization uh, behind us 
behind her uh, and us because uh, uh, I would like to thank them, especially because it is a very, um, how you call this, uh, very important for us artists to get an opportunity to uh, uh, travel outside our own uh, familiar um, uh, home, you know, and uh, thanks to uh, the friendship uh, between Ms. Rosie and uh, Ms. Monique. And uh, I uh, came to uh, learn, uh, uh, I, I, I came to learn uh, more family, uh, like uh, Dr. Alex and uh, all over the uh, Caribbean that had uh, enriched my practice uh, along those years uh, uh, gone by. And uh, it is true uh, that uh, traveling uh, through time and through, especially uh, traveling through those uh, Caribbean uh, uh, landscapes that I uh, start um, recognizing my history uh, and how, how you call it, uh, searching for uh, my identity became uh, much uh, clearer. And uh, uh, Mr. Rossi, uh talked about uh, about how I work. So uh, uh, I like to use uh, uh, all kind of uh, objects. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, normally uh, I'm not invited uh, into other people, uh, family members at home because they know certain <laughs> things are, <laughs> are uh, missing at the end of my... Uh, <laughs> yeah, <it's too> much. <laughs> yes. But uh, I would uh, uh, very much uh, like to thank uh, Ms. Persona uh, Morrison yeah. and especially uh, related uh, Mr. Cecil Cooper and yeah. uh, Ms. George uh, because uh, it is uh, because of uh, those uh, teachers and also uh, the ones from uh, Nola Hatterman, I don't uh, need uh, not to forget uh, that uh, part, especially uh, my uh, former director, Mane Rinaldo class, that uh, allowed me to uh, uh, grow uh, spiritually, but also uh, uh, through what I am uh, today uh, uh, as a practitioner of uh, this uh, uh, wonderful uh, art. Cool. That I'm Yes. The, the work is amazing. Yes. I mean, what a journey. And Rosie walked us through, you know, through it, you know, from the first time I got exposed to your work in this, you know, masterpiece here. The yeah. question is, you know, can you walk us through the creative process? How, 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 how do you create such an installation piece? Yes, it, is, uh, it all started. Uh, um, back in uh, the days uh, with, uh, if I remember back through memories, you know, mm -hmm. uh, first started out uh, at uh, Adna Manly uh, College, where I uh, met uh, as a stranger, I met uh, uh, Michael Elliott, you know, uh, who was a dear uh, brother of mine and uh, another uh, a young friend uh, that really opened our doors for me. Uh, Keisha Castello, who now uh, lives in uh, London, mm -hmm. um, and uh, because I couldn't return home, uh, I needed to explore the island, uh, the beautiful island of Jamaica, uh, more and more. So uh, most of the time, especially in the summer and also during art classes, uh, my uh, student, uh, fellow student, uh, Keisha Castello, uh, brought me uh, to Port Royal uh, Beach, uh, where she would uh, search for her own materials uh, back then. Because uh, you know, uh, when uh, you are at such a big uh, school and resources are not there, you know, you are pushed uh, to towards uh, other uh, uh, types of uh, finding materials uh, to work with. So uh, that is uh, how um, my mind is kind of uh, get uh, function functional, mm -hmm. and uh, that uh, had uh, a lot of uh, to do with uh, my process because uh, coming from a Dutch speaking place, entering an English speaking uh, place, um, 
uh, it's very difficult. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, people uh, might uh, see it different, but uh, I've always uh, found, uh, I always, uh, how you call it, uh, found it uh, nice to, uh, not nice, but very strange why I could adapt to the Jamaican Patois uh, more, 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 more uh, 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 how you call it, uh, I could adapt to that more easily. And after six months, uh, I was surprised myself that uh, I could uh, uh, speak it fluently. And that triggered me along the way. And uh, it was, uh, how you call it, many years later, when uh, through the ice uh, trips that uh, things fall into places, uh, when uh, through being together with you guys, traveling to Guadeloupe uh, many times, uh, uh, traveling to uh, New Orleans uh, at uh, the John Mitchell uh, Art uh, Foundation, uh, traveling uh, through uh, Jamaica, where I start, uh, how you call it, uh, uh, recognize that uh, language is uh, something uh, very special. So uh, uh, I found uh, through uh, digging in, in, in my past experience at, at Normandy that uh, I found very fascinating that uh, uh, the language that we have that in common because certain uh, uh, words, you know, uh, that uh, the Jamaican people uh, speak are very similar to our own uh, what, uh, we uh, When we were growing up, we were not allowed to speak that, uh, that language uh, at, at home, you know, um, and that uh, still now, uh, sometimes uh, when I speak that uh, uh, language, uh, um, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's not a common thing. So that that what uh, admired me when I uh, hear the uh, Jamaican patois, I felt right at home, you know. And uh, now uh, married to uh, uh, yes, one, <laughs> one of them, and when. <laughs> Went through time, I uh, entered the space of uh, my wife's uh, home. Um, sometimes I ask myself why things are spiritually happening to me, you know, uh, totally strangers, uh, ending up <laughs> on a beautiful mountain uh, high up. Uh, uh, so that started me thinking, and that is uh, a big pool that uh, gave me an inspiration uh, to that lead me uh, to uh, this uh, this uh, kind of body of work. Um, Harry, um, as I look at the installation and I have it on my screen as well, a different view on my screen, um, this this installation is, is a, almost like an altar. Well, it is an altar, right? It's a, it's an altar, it is yes. an altar and um, in, in the Caribbean, in the Caribbean analysis, everyday ordinary analysis of this art piece, people would say it looked like voodoo, it looked like obia, it looked like you're trying to bring up all kind of spirits, right? Yes. Um, but in truth and in fact, when you look at it through the lens of contemporary art, what what I see is memory, rituals, um, the, the shape of the of, of it is the shape of this slave ship, which is why. Um, Alex took us through that journey, looking at Laura Face's work. Um, the work doesn't have to be identical, folks. It is the it is the imagination from the work. It is the the pronouncement of the work that makes it so interesting. Um, when we showed your calabash here, you know you're not supposed to touch your artwork, but tell people that look like me not to touch your artwork, and it is like saying touch the artwork, right? Yes. We knew yes. that they were touching the calabash because every day we would walk through to turn on the lights at the gallery and the calabash would be moved, changed. Yes. And, yes. and I think that what they were looking at is they were looking at the carvings in it. And, yeah. um, can you just mention for us um, whether it is decorative or whether this is a practice of the Maroons to carve these intricate, beautiful carvings on these um, calabash? And for for my American friends, a calabash is a gourd. 
I'm teasing. Yes. So we, we don't say calabash in the United States, they say gourds. And in South Carolina, they have these huge ones. So, um, but in the Caribbean, we call it carrot, calabash. Tell me a little bit about the carving, please. Yes, it is a, it's a tradition uh, uh, about uh, from our uh, maroon, uh, maroons uh, here uh, in, uh, in Suriname. Mm -hmm. But uh, why I uh, especially uh, used uh, this uh, uh, calabash is when I uh, studied uh, or did some more research uh, about uh, the, the history about uh, slavery. Mm -hmm. I uh, came uh, on uh, uh, the Dutch uh, involvement uh, in the slave, uh, uh, slavery uh, business. And mm -hmm. uh, when I uh, uh, returned in, on, 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 on the internet to uh, uh, places like uh, Fort uh, Elmina, and where uh, the, the Dutch uh, uh, took the uh, African uh, ancestors uh, uh, to be washed um, after a long journey, uh, they uh, let uh, uh, the uh, slaves uh, uh, took a uh, last bath, you know, uh, and mm -hmm. then uh, also give uh, to drink water. They mm -hmm. also uh, give uh, them the calabash uh, uh, to drink right. out uh, right. that. So uh, that uh, triggered me uh, into. Uh, uh, using uh, uh, this uh, this uh, uh, calabash right. because uh, um, from what you always uh, learn uh, at uh, at Namelli, especially uh, um, from uh, teachers like uh, belated uh, Cecil Cooper and uh, uh, Miss Patrona Morrison, they always use a phrase is uh, less is uh, more. You know, yeah. uh, you don't yeah. need to. Yeah. to tell. Uh, everything. So I uh, am always uh, triggered uh, by uh, uh, things that uh, uh, people don't like to uh, speak about the dark side, about yeah. history. Yeah. So yeah. when I, uh, I'm always uh, fascinated uh, in numbers and uh, talking to my good uh, art colleague, uh, Miguel Kerfeld, who is also uh, on a, sp a spiritual journey of his uh, own um, when we talk and we uh, uh, talk over the numbers uh, the numbers uh, grab my attention uh, directly you know yeah. and uh, it uh, was about uh, 646 so but that was um, first of all that was that, that didn't mean anything but when I when I studied closely I uh, uh, suddenly say okay if you put two on top of the four, then the number become uh, six, 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 you know, and it's a term uh, normally uh, refers uh, to evil uh, uh, spirits. And that what triggered me uh, to really uh, um, uh, go after uh, making into uh, this, uh, this piece and uh, what uh, what uh, money uh, did for us uh, is uh, uh, something uh, and and the guidance through my gallery here that always support uh, me uh, into uh, uh, pointing out when uh, looking at the big picture all the time. Right. Uh, sometimes it's hard uh, that yes, uh, sometimes you are mature, but if uh, you don't have the resources of, uh, or have the money, you know you can dream as big as you want but you don't have the money to go and buy the, <laughs> the thing. necessary right. things right. to make the work. So uh, the work put behind the scenes to uh, be able to collect the award uh, money uh, really means a lot for us artists, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, normally we artists forget about that piece that <laughs> you, you don't stand up uh, in the morning and somebody uh, not uh, somewhere else uh, is, 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 is helping you uh, doing doing other work uh, it is a, it's a teamwork you yeah. know and yeah. uh, we sometimes we uh, not see that 
uh, are not appreciate that other people behind us, you know, are as much as important uh, to us to develop uh, this work. But Harry, I just want to say, I know we have to close that this, this particular um, installation could go anywhere to any major fair. It could be in the, at the Venice Biennale, it could be in London at the, the Tate, it could be at the, at, at the Whitney. It is a very um, provocative, uh, emotionally stirring. And I love the use of rum because you know the spirits need the rum to travel from here to there wherever here and there is. And we have a tradition of throwing the rum on the ground, sprinkling the rum around to, to invite the spirits to come. And, and you have used that. You use light, you use the formation that is really um, a, a nod to art history, the formation of, the, of the, the altar. And then you have a painting inside the altar. I mean, that is actually, you're actually naming the spirit. So thank you for the work. It, this. I can't, you know, both Alex and I need to come and see this work in Suriname. Hint, hint, hint. And, uh, <laughs> and to be able to give you and Monique the, the well-deserved hug. And thank you for mm -hmm. this opportunity to highlight the work that we continue with hardship to do in Miami Dade, um, where we live and work. But our hearts, my heart, is in the Caribbean. Thank you. Thank you both. Yes. Indeed, we have Thank comments you. at five past two already. We have um, a time flu, uh, as we suspected it would. There was a question, but I think we're going to answer that by text. Um, I will point it out to, to Court. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for participating. Um, thank you very much to everybody who's watching now and who will be watching later, perhaps when there is more time. Um, I invite you to look uh, at, the, uh, at the film again. Um, we will be um, uh, reposting one with sound. And um, I invite you to visit the Atlantic World Art Fair. We have five more active days left. I hope that um, people around the world, but especially Caribbeans around the world, we need that village and we need that community. I hope that you will make an effort to um, learn about artists that are active and that you will make an effort to validate their work and start collecting. <laughs> Yes. yes. Thank you, Rosie. Thank, Thank you, you, Alex. Thank you. 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 And bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Yes. It was a joy. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, bye. Dr. Alex and Ms. Rosie. Safety.